What you're looking at here is one kind of bubble arrestor that I have made. This is made out of plexiglass and it's a little more complicated than what the video is going to show you on bubble arrestors that I have made. So stay tuned. Hello everybody, this is Dr. Novak. What I'm going to talk about is bubble arrestors. Uh, if you see my 40 gallon breeder, you will see one of these on the aquarium. And what it is, is that this sits in the corner. It's made out of plexiglass. And the bubbles come up, they pop underneath here. It's got a little lip that you uh, can bend with the plexiglass. You will need something like, uh, like this to heat up the plexiglass, and then you'll have to bend it. Um, this is a lot of work to make something like this because you have to make it, you have to sand it, and then you have to try to bend the plexiglass. And a lot of people, I understand, may not have the skill level or they may live in apartments or whatever, and they don't have all the tools to make a bubble arrestor like this and go through all the trouble of doing this and cutting it and sanding it. So, But I wanted to show you, uh, if you see in my 40-gallon, you will see this. And it does. It the bubbles pop underneath it. This stops the bubbles from penetrating into the aquarium and popping all over your light and all over your uh, aquarium glass if you have glass on your aquarium. So what I did is I bought a tube like this. This is a tube that you can buy at any hardware store. It's to a uh, wet dry vac. It's a two inch tube. You can also buy it in one and a quarter. This is one and a quarter. This is two inch. <clears throat> and they're black. So if you have a black background, it's good. And you can use these tubes. And as you see, I, I took one and I cut it to the length I need it. And I glued on an old magnetic scraper onto it. And because I have so many of these magnetic scrapers that I uh, use that to hold it on. What happens is it's this this tube here is tapered. It's bigger at the bottom and smaller at the top. Okay. So you cut it wherever you want and then you sand it, of course, and, and make it look nice. And you can use glue. You can use two types of glue, of course, as you know. You can use like black silicone glue, which you can buy um, at any hardware store. You can also use this Rapid fuse, which I've shown in several videos. This is not super glue. Super glue is designed that after you glue something with it, it is designed that uh, once water gets to it, it will start weakening. And it was designed during the Vietnam period to super glue skin together. And after a while, from the moisture from the skin, after it healed, the glue would dissipate and um, that's how it was designed. So, But this I've used in my aquariums, as you saw uh, for my plenum and stuff. Non-toxic to the fish. It's inexpensive. You can glue all your, if you need plants or anything else. So I use this to glue it. And the good thing about it is you don't have to wait like 24 hours like you do if you're using silicone. Where silicone needs at least 24 hours to dry. This needs couple hours and that's it. Put pressure on it, put your magnet on it. And the magnet, of course, like I said, is from these scraper magnets. I got a lot of these magnets here. I got this. This one is made in Italy. This is a, a very good magnet from Aquarium Systems. And it was used for, it, basically it came out because of saltwater aquariums. This one called a twister. Very, very powerful. I mean, this thing is real powerful. So it would go through thick aquarium glass. The problem I had with it, of course, is if you went into your freshwater aquarium, some of your substrate could have iron in it. It would pick it up and get in between the magnet and the glass, scratch your glass. It's not like the newer ones. Plus the fact, if this uh, scraper you know, fell off, you had to have a string tied to it. And that was a big hassle. And so you can pull it up out of the water. So I have a lot of old scrapers that uh, 
their usefulness is pretty well over. This is a fluval one, but this one only works with very, very thin glass. It won't work with uh, a lot of your aquariums that are using 5 16 or 3 8 glass. It's just not strong enough. And it was designed so you can get into corners with it, but the trouble is it keeps popping off. And once again, you have to connect a string to it. Not like the newer ones that are out there today, something like this one where, where if they do pop off, it floats. And uh, I'll let you know about this later. But basically, these are, uh, I use these brand because, you know, I use the uh, Hager brand only because they seem to make a decent brand and they seem to not cost that much. Some of these scrapers, uh, as if you have looked, uh, they're made out of like real wood. You know, this one's just a phony wood, but they're over a hundred bucks. And that, that's pretty expensive. hundred bucks for a scraper. I'm sorry, I can't pay that much for a scraper, even though these are kind of expensive when I bought them, but I don't use them. So what you do is, as the bubbles are rising, you put this you put this over where the bubbles are rising. You, ra you raise this up out of the uh, aquarium a little bit, okay, and the bubbles pop inside here. Another thing you can do that, uh, if you want, is you can put a cap on. This cap goes to a a container that has a spice in it. It's a plastic container. It has a cap. The cap fits perfect on it. I drilled a hole in it. And now this could be put a little deeper into the aquarium. Then when the bubbles come up, they pop and the air gets released through here. If you don't have that, this thing is going to bounce like this, releasing air out of it. So you put a little hole in there and it stops it from popping up and down, making a noise. Now, another good advantage if you make something like this, it quiets down your bubble popping noise in your aquarium by about 50%, which is pretty good. And I like that. It makes it a little more quieter. So it, it uh, it's like anything else we want. We want all these things to be quiet. Or you can run it without it. Just make sure it's sticking out of the aquarium enough. And you'll be able to judge how that is. And the bubbles will stay inside here and pop inside here, and they won't spread out. And the only reason is, is because in Chicago and Florida, we have a lot of calcium. And when those bubbles pop, they release that calcium. And before you know it, it's getting on your glass. If you have a glass lid, it's, it's all over your glass lid. And that's like my goldfish tank. And that is almost next to impossible to get off. Once it gets on your glass lid, I've tried all kinds of different things. And even when it gets on your aquarium glass, you literally have to wet it and get a razor blade and scratch, you know, scratch the deposit off. And it may not even get 100% of it. And you'll see a little ring around your aquarium because of the hard water has left a hard water mark. So anyway, this helps because a lot of us now are using plenums. A lot of us are using bubblers. And we don't want the bubbles to spread all over the tank. This will, the bubbles will come up in here. It won't catch 100% of them, but it will do a good job. Now, let's say if you're the hobbyist who says, well, I'd like it to catch 100% of it. Okay, all right. You could use this, make it the same way by putting a magnet on it and sticking it to the back, wherever your bubbler is. And what you do is you, let's say this is the bottom and it's going to be where you're substrate is, and it's black, so you're not going to be able to see it, you, you drill uh, 3 8 holes all around it. So that way when the bubbler comes up, if it sucks in any water, it's not going to make a suction from the plenum. It's just going to suck water in and blow it out the top end. And then you cut it to the length of your aquarium, right? And you have it stick out and you have it pop in, inside here. Easy enough. And it's black, so you're not going to see it. So now your bubbles come up inside here. They pop inside here. You have this up an inch or two out of the water. It quiets it down. Your plenum's going to work just fine. You're not going to see the bubbles anymore. It's still going to do and function 100% of its ability. You're not going to hinder it. Just make sure 
you, you know, put some holes in it. Do you necessarily have to do that? I would say if you're using sand or something, well, it will, maybe, you probably don't. You can try it out. You can, you can do the whole thing. Don't put the holes in it. Put it in. Try it out. If it seems to work, go with it. If it seems to make an uplift tube, because some people are using one-inch uplift tubes, and this is very close to that, you don't want that, because then it's going to be adding more suction into your plenum. That's why I said you may want to drill 3 8 holes in the bottom here, just so if it does suck in water, it's going to suck it from the aquarium and not from your plenum. Okay, that's, that's something. Once again, you can use suction cups. If you don't have any magnets or don't want to buy the magnets, uh, suction cups can be bought at uh, any aquarium store. Like I said, the pipes, hardware store. This is nothing but wet dry vacuum. Two inch, one and a quarter inch. Wet dry vacuum stuff. Or you can even go like here's a, a, a container from an Eheim. This is for the feeder. You can buy something like this, or you may already have one. Once again, Take a magnet, glue the magnet onto here, put it onto your aquarium, let the bubbles come up here. This will be at the top. They'll all pop inside here and not spread out through the aquarium. Another thing you can use is something like this. This you can buy at hardware store. This is nothing but for a lamp. And once again, glue it on to the glass. And this could be stuck where the bubbles will come up through the big end and they'll all pop in the smaller end. Now, like I said, you can buy stuff kind of like this. I've seen it on uh, Amazon. But if you're like me and like to make stuff, uh, use what you have. Like I said, I got a lot of these magnets all sitting around that I'm not using because I use the newer ones today than these older ones because one of the big problems with the older magnets is if you go too near the substrate, um, and since I always used a... Uh, gravel, it will pick up the gravel that may be uh, able to be it's a not fair, fair material, and it will pick up that and then stick to it, and then boom, you're going up. All of a sudden, you hear a scratchy noise. So I stopped using these kind of magnets and go with the more modern magnets with the way they've done them. Anyhow, that's that's it for this video. I just want to show you, if you don't like looking at the bubbles going up, or if you don't want the bubbles spreading out in your tank, you don't want them popping uh, all over your glass, because once it does that, it seems like it's a pain to clean. And if you uh, let it go too long, don't, that uh, calcium is almost next to impossible. Really, I've used um, decalcifier. I've used uh, vinegar, where I let vinegar sit on there for hours. It still didn't take the old calcium. So something like this. A simple little thing, a little project that anyone can do. This will take a few minutes, and you have an old scraper on hand. Use it. And so I thought I would show you that and give you a little hint what you can do. A nice little project, a uh, project like this, I'm going to say an uh, hour or less, you know, to cut it and sand it, how critical you want to be. Glue it on. You wait a couple hours for the glue to really set strong. Make sure you keep a clamp on it, and, and you're good to go. And it costs you just the price of a black tubing. Or you can get, like I said, this if you want to make it go all the way through your aquarium so you don't see any of the bubbles. And a lot of people have black backgrounds. They don't want to see that bubbler coming up. Here's your answer. Connect it to a magnet. So the magnet will hold it in place for you. Uh, so, or you, like I said, or you can use suction cups. Drill a couple holes, put a couple suction cups, suction cup it to your back of your aquarium, and that will do the trick for you. So until next time, uh, this is Dr. Novak. Um, thank you very much for watching. I like doing videos like like this personally because they're little projects. I I constantly am thinking of projects I can do with my aquarium to make things easier or to make things a little quieter. And this is one where I notice a 50% quieter, keeps the bubbles where they're supposed to be and doesn't mess up my aquarium. And as you see by the pictures, 
my aquarium's already gotten messed up from the bubbles popping. So I knew I had to solve the problem quickly because I didn't like that. Until next time, Dr. Novak, thank you very much for watching. And also thank you very much for subscribing. Um, no, my channel's not as big as a lot of other people's channels. I understand that. But uh, I just try to give you pertinent information that I think you would be happy with ways of trying to save money, use old products that you may have sitting around. How can you use them? Like I said, you can mount these on heaters and stuff. Uh, that's the kind of stuff I like doing. Uh, making the hobby a little fun because like the 90 gallon, the 90 gallon, I don't do any work to. You know, it, it's, it's, it's one of those things. Next month, it'll be a year old. And I'll show you a video on next month of all the progression of how the tank developed for a year. But uh, I like stuff like this. Little little things that you can make and say, oh yeah, I wish I would have thought of that, you know. Okay, thank you very much for watching and thank you very much for subscribing to my channel. Until next time, happy fish keeping.